right, everybody, for you YouTube watchers that want to know more about this row crop head, they called in the honey badger to give the explanation. So here's your gearbox off the combine. Follow the drive line. PTO shaft shield on it. Okay, drives this sprocket. Idler pulley drives this slip clutch. The slip clutch goes down here and drives the shaft with these worm gears. And that goes half of the head and the other side drives the other half. Well, that bevel gear right there drives that bevel gear and that shaft down there where you see that coupler, so that's a shear point, drives that shaft up there, which in chain drives this roller chain, which in chain drives this shaft here, which is a spline that comes up through that sprocket. And here is the whole beast right here. So see this rotary knife? There's six of those on there with three bolts in each, and they're different than a sickle bar cutter knife. Then you see that stationary blade there where my finger is, right there. It comes around and it pinches the crop in there. You can flip that stationary blade year to year. You get a season out of each side. We replace these every year. This spins around and it comes this way and it cuts the beanstalk right there. You can see that's how a row crop head works. Obviously it's for 30 inch rows. And then you have your gathering belts in the center and you can see down in there. And then when it cuts the bean, it rides up in those belts like little soldiers, it hits the auger, beautiful feed and away they go. That is your row crop head, 1253A built by Brad Bish out in Nebraska. Later. Good morning, YouTube. Today, we're cutting seed beans. Now, seed beans aren't as detailed and as much of a process as seed corn is. Kind of explain what we, as the grower, have to do for seed beans. There's a little more work on our end in terms of harvest because we actually have to harvest it ourselves and store it. They're really not any different than commercial beans. Just got to handle them a little differently. These beans are produced and grown this year and then stored and taken to a production facility over the winter where they get processed, cleaned, sorted, all that jazz, bagged, and then eventually taken to dealers, sold to the farmer to be grown for commercial beans. The seed beans don't have a unique process like seed corn does where you have male and female rows because there's no way to do that in seed beans because they have See if I can explain this. So during the summer, when these beans are growing, each of these pods has a bunch, there's a bunch of little flowers on here. And those flowers are really small and they contain both male and female uh, parts all in the same flower. So there's no way to remove a male part and then have another bean pollinate the female part. Like you have corn, you have the tassel, you move the tassel then a different inbred can pollinate the silks on the other ear or whatever. You don't really, that isn't really how this works with legumes because they have, hopefully I'm saying this right, they have perfect and complete flowers, which means the flowers on them contain all the necessary parts to reproduce on its own. Plant them, they grow. Now what goes on before the grower gets them? I don't have a clue. We just get them, grow them. And in order to grow seed beans, you have to have your own storage bins. We have a couple locations. You go to harvest them, you know, you just cut them like you do any other bean field. And we scale everything because we have a scale. Take them, store them in those bins. And then in the winter, the company we grow for usually comes out. Uh, they come, look at the bin, check the beans, test for germ quality. Then if it meets all their standards and they need them, they come, bring their own trucks, have their own guy come back them out, haul them up to their production plant where they do whatever it is they do, condition them, bag them, and get them ready for planting the next season. Now, for some reason, 
they don't need the beans or they don't make their germ quality that they want, then it's on us to move them or take them to elevator and sell them for them. So overall, the process of seed beans is a little simpler, but at harvest, there's just more work for us because we have to harvest them all, store them in the bins, try to ensure the best quality we can because these are eventually gonna potentially get used to be grown for uh, commercial beans. It's that time of year. We're doing our favorite thing at Man Family Farms, putting beans in the bin. Yeah. Harvesting some seed beans today and uh, they're going in the bin. Let's see how this process goes. 30 foot diameter bin here, holds about 12, 15,000 bushel. And uh, yeah, we're gonna harvest about 12,000 on this farm we're doing today. Made a few passes here, get things opened up. Moisture's running anywhere from 12 to 13, which is kind of nice. Stuff's been around 10 to 9. There's some spots are good and dry, but there's other spots that are real leafy and really green stemmy. Everything's kind of green stem, but there's other areas that are worse than others. But the moisture on the beans is good, so we're getting them. So this is actually one of the better looking spots. There's a few green leaves, not too bad. Then you kind of see up ahead, there's looking like a little spot where it gets a little greener. Not ideal, but you do what you gotta do. Here we are, it's the Battle of the N14s. Got the 2000 in front of me and got the 84 behind. I'm catching him. I'm, I think I'm eating his lunch. I gotta hold back. Oh yeah, she might be as strong as the 2000. Gaining on him, going uphill, look at this. Oh, kick that gram in the butt, let's go. I still got two holes left. All right. Might be getting a little mojo now, but I ain't losing anything on this. Later. Unloading beans. Back off of first. Back up to the front hopper, then pull back ahead, swing the hopper back over. Bobcat here, getting her done. Now one might say to yourself, what are you doing this close to the house and two inches away from the ground? Well, we're unloading beans in the west bend and that is our situation. Working great. I will say, the luxury we never had before we had this draper head is outlining waterways. program here at Man Family Farms and um, you know once a day twice a day whatever works out when you get time and you're waiting for a load you get out you stretch out a little bit it's good for your cardiovascular and you don't get all stiff from setting in tractor for 12 14 hours a day
done opening up all the head rows going around all the waterways finally got a line set we're going straight time to hammer down Beaning. We had to put the 8520 on the grain cart. A truth be told, even though sometimes I may not like to admit it, but this is probably my favorite, but least favorite tractor on the grain cart. It's my favorite when conditions are good because these tractors are small and nimble and they shift through gears really good and they're quick. I can run faster, I feel like, with these. It rides the smoothest, for sure, with the ILS. But they're also my least favorite because when it gets really wet out, which we've had some wet falls the past few years, um, they tend to not want to pull these 1,000 bushel grain carts very well. That's the only uh, disadvantage. But other than those reasons, I'll take an 8000 series front wheel assist dueled up tractor on the grain cart any day of the week over anything else. Well everyone, it is currently, it's got a cab light in here, oh, oh there we go, it is currently 10.17pm Central Standard Time. We're getting close, getting the field done. Beans are still dry as can be. Running 9%, still cutting pretty good. We're either gonna go until we get the field done or until I gotta get fuel. So in this field so far, I've done 107 acres. Running 9.6% moisture, which is pretty dry for beans or anything that, for that matter. Everything's still flowing good. Run four and a half mile an hour. I'm loading on the go at night. With 12 row row crop head. Gotta love it. Look at that, baby. Well, we're putting uh, seed beans. Just finished up a field tonight. We're putting seed beans in a bin. We got a bin on location here. Instead of dumping auger wagons into the trucks, this is what we got a 757, just a little, just a grain cart, I don't know what you call them, just a grain wagon, just a wagon, I'm drawing a blank. 
So normally we'll just dump the auger wagons onto this grain. Still draw a wagon. It's grain cart. It's not a grain cart. It's a, it's a wagon. There she goes. Last load of beans. Last load of seed beans. Into the wagon. Into the 90 foot auger. Into the bed. Hit her pattern. Let's get at her. There's Bucky. Taking some video too. Seed bean harvest done. Time to finish commercial beans. We got high cap shout out on the 7800. We got the lights for the combine. You can see the yellow ones. I put the side finders on. Got that one. Got those up there. Got those. Got the ones in the back. Just gotta put them on. That's a wrap for tonight. See you in the funny.